once again for watching and this is Iris, your favorite therapist and spiritual gangster. By now, if you've been watching, you know exactly what I'm talking about, right? Well, today's subject, I'm, I'm actually kind of uh, been thinking about this, been thinking about doing a video um, on this subject because it's something that a lot of us are actually really, 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 really interested in, right? Uh, sometimes I feel like people are more interested in making money than in finding love, okay? And I, I mean, I honestly think it's, the, it's more finding love, but I think people are more afraid to admit to themselves that they want love because at the end of the day, we are always in search of doing things that will make us feel better. And in this physical reality, in this physical world, in this earth, in the society, we focus on love, but as you probably know, we focus a lot more on the material things and especially on money. So what better way to talk about money or maybe better person to tell you what I've learned about money and the energy of money than somebody who decided to break away from society and, you know, which is basically not work for anybody else and try to make my own money, right? Try to become completely independent. And so I'm gonna actually make another video about uh, the things that I have learned from starting my own business and things like that. And actually that's gonna be my next video and I'm super excited about that because man, have I learned some really, really important life lessons. Uh, but before I get to that, of course, I wanna talk about the energy of money because money is a form of energy, all right? It's not just this materialistic paper stuff that um, gets us more stuff. Money is an energy. Everything is energy. So think about it this way. There's so much to say, to be honest with you. I mean, this is, this is so little. This is just to really give you a heads up in what's really going on in your consciousness, in your mind. And, um, you know, I base my life understanding that I create my reality. The most important thing, if you don't get anything out of this video, I just want you to remember this. Because we create our own reality, think about, you know, where you are in life in terms of money, or even think about where you are in, in life in terms of different aspects of your life. Health, friendships, uh, relationships, love, self-love, uh, career success, and things like that. And if you find yourself that you are stagnant in certain areas of your life, whether it's money, love, self-love, this and that, just the most important part about this is that the reason why your abundance, doesn't matter what kind of abundance, your abundance is not flowing to a certain part of your life that you would like for it to flow, in this case, let's talk about money, it has everything to do with how you view money. There are so many people, so many of us, not even people, us, because I'm part of those people. There are so many of us that want to make more money, but the moment that I mention the word money, everybody gets a face of, oh. you see? Think about it this way. Ask yourself this question, and let's start with this. How does money make you feel? When I say the word money, right now that you're taking this moment to watch this video, when I say the word money, making money or, or just money, how does it make you feel? I'm sure you feel a certain soup of a bunch of different feelings, you know? Um, the negative, there's a bunch of negative feelings and a bunch of positive feelings. Um, the best thing that I suggest for you to do is write them down, both negative and positive, write those feelings down, okay? And just weigh them out, weigh them out. For you to make money, this is really serious, guys. For you to earn a living, you've got to get rid of all those negative feelings because those negative feelings come from negative belief systems. So in other words, for you to earn more money, the first thing that you have to do is question your beliefs, question your feelings. 
and especially question your negative feelings okay question them when we question things when we challenge these belief systems whether in ourselves or in other people you are giving way for new belief, belief systems and for old belief systems old paradigms that we learned in childhood because this is where they actually come from you give way to letting those things go and adapting a new belief system that will open up your energy for money one of the belief systems that i used to have for money was that i have to work hard for my money oh my god that is actually the belief system that everybody has that's the belief the belief system that we have all adapted because this is something that we've been hearing over and over and over again since we were little but i'm sorry there's a lot of people and you hear these people that they make money and they make money easily they make money joyously because they really enjoy what they're doing but regardless you actually you know what there are even people that they don't even they don't even have to enjoy what they're doing but they enjoy the process of making money and because they enjoy the process of making money they don't have a negative view towards money and so they earn more naturally um, one of the biggest uh, one of the biggest examples that I can think of right now is people that are into real estate okay a lot of people that are into real estate uh, that's not the only thing that they do but that's what brings them their their income that's what brings them a huge amount of money to you know to their bank account and then what they do with it is they do a bunch of other stuff that they really do enjoy but I've talked to I mean from a lot of the different realtors that I've talked to you know a lot of them will admit you know they I, I'm not in, I'm not necessarily in love with what I do um, some of them are of course I'm, I'm not taking that away but I'm saying, you know, a lot of them are not necessarily in love with what they do, but there is some sort of aspect that they enjoy. But not only that, is that the money that they make, they use that money and invest it in things that they actually really do enjoy. Well, think of it like that. And a lot of these people tend to be very successful because they understand that there has to be some sort of enjoyment with money and they have already adapted a certain belief system that it's like, okay, this is, you know, I'm going to help somebody out. I'm going to do a service. I'm going to do a service. And, and with that service, I'm gonna have some abundance. And with that abundance, I'm gonna apply into something that I love. That in and of itself, this whole concoction that I just, that I just spoke about, there is a certain enjoyment to that. This, this is why some people, for some people, it's easier to make money than others because they don't have those negative aspects towards money, okay? And when I tell you that those aspects, those um, belief systems, those paradigms, they literally, literally come from your parents and the world that you grow up around, okay? Especially your parents. We start adapting these belief systems since probably, I wanna say the age of two, that we're actually able to start to put things um, intellectually. And so, little things like Little things like, oh, that rich motherfucker over there, you know, excuse, well, don't excuse my friends. You guys all know that I have a little potty mouth and I love it. When you hear your parents speak about rich people that way, when you hear your parents do that, that sends a signal to your brain that money is evil, that money is greed. Things that we hear in movies, songs that we hear on the radio. And so these are things that we hear all the time. The fact that people are struggling to make money, the fact that people are poor to make money, like people are just poor. And so these are things that we adapt, especially the whole working hard for your money. I used to have that so ingrained in me that I remember um, the first couple of years of my business, um, well, the first year especially, I felt like I had to like work hard and, and keep proving myself and keep proving to myself and keep proving all this stuff and just you know, trying to find a way of working. And if I wasn't working, I was having a fit because it's like, I need to be productive. I need to be productive. If I'm not productive, there's no money flow. I'm sorry guys, but that's complete bullshit. That is complete bullshit. And you know how you know this? Because you know this. That's the thing. You may not want to admit it to yourself, but this is bullshit. You know what? This is bullshit. 
because you always know somebody that makes money very easily. You always know somebody that finds money on the floor. You always know somebody that's getting checks in the mail. And they seem to be so okay with themselves and so okay with the money that, they, that they're making because, they, because somehow they know and you feel that. That's the thing, you feel that. That's why it's energy, that that money's gonna come to them and that money comes so easily to them, right? So I wanna give you guys more things about uh, about this whole money situation. Another thing that we've been taught in life, which is, you see, this, this, I think, is the root of all evil, okay? Because a lot of people have also this whole idea that money is the root of all evil, and because uh, we, um, you know, the more money, the more money, the more problems, and there is some truth to that, absolutely. But what if we look at them as responsibilities? And if you look at money joyously, wouldn't you want to pay your bills joyously too? You know? How do you feel when you pay your bills? Do you feel happy when you pay your bills? No, most of us don't. We feel like, dang, here we go again. Money, money, I just got paid and I gotta pay $500 to my car and the car insurance. Or I gotta pay, you know, a thousand, two thousand dollars for rent and mortgage. Right? So then you go and you click that pay button and you're like, fuck. Here we go, you know. But then, and then you're like, well, at least I have a home, at least I have a car, you know. And then you, that, that just like calms you down. And then you move on with your day, and you go out with your friends, and you forget about it. Believe it or not, that is a belief system, okay? And there's so much more. Like I could make, uh, maybe I could make like an hour, two hours of understanding this whole situation about money. But the most important part is that what blocks you from money is how you view money okay another thing is money equals stability money equals safety security when we grow up in homes that weren't stable whether it was because of money issues or whether it was because of divorce or abuse physical abuse and beyond emotional abuse whatever that is going to disrupt your first and second chakras okay your first chakra is your stability and safety. What is money? Stability and safety. It is some, It is the one of the things that we need the most to be able to feel stable and to be able to feel safe in this earth plane and survive. If you're having problems with money, you gotta take a look at your childhood. End of story. And you gotta take a look at all the belief systems that you have adapted in childhood. A lot of times money is reflected in traumas that we have lived in childhood. And trauma, again, doesn't have to be abuse. It could just be divorce. It could be moving away from your family. It could be moving away from your friends constantly. You know, people actually experience trauma when their children and their parents tend to move a lot, okay? Because you are there's no stability for the child and the child cannot connect with other children and feel loved, feel stable. Even when the parents love the child, moving away to different places can be very traumatic and especially, well, traumatic to your first and second chakras. And so here you are the whole time trying to find stability and so it's reflected on your money. I know for a fact that my own traumas were reflected on love and money. What I really, really, really believe and what I've learned that is the root of all evil is actually this, um, ridiculous <laughs> but we all know this we all know this this ridiculous way of thinking that there's not enough we grew up in a society that when we are born there's not enough money there's not enough food there's not enough shelter there's not enough of everything okay there's not enough friends there's not enough goodness in the world that is directly translated into you so then all of a sudden our mind creates this ridiculous paradigm within ourselves that we are not enough that we are this that we are not this and we are not that and i'm not qualified enough i'm not healthy enough i'm not smart enough and this is not everybody uh, there are some people that make amazing money, that they're so good at the money game and then they lack love, they lack compassion. Again, it's because they're seeing money as a game. They're not seeing it, they're not seeing money as a form of love. Which brings me to um, my second, well actually no wait, I talked about... 
too. One one way that for me that helped me view money better is that I started uh, comparing money to love. So for me, money equals love. Okay, because when I make money, when I well, when I receive money, whether it's from my clients, from working extra gigs somewhere, um, I feel loved. Okay, I feel loved by the universe. I am so thankful and I'm so grateful for when I make money, when money comes into my life. And so that's the that's the terminology, that's the sorry, that's the association that I wanted to create for myself because it made me feel good. Because we all want love. We are in a huge search of love. And the reality is is that you are in love. The more you can see yourself as the love that you are, the more your energy opens up to many things that you already are, okay? Because you are beautiful, you are loving, you're amazing, and you are abundant, okay? Abundance is completely and utterly unlimited. How can I say it? There is so much money in this world. There are people that have to work to get rid of their money. There are people that have to do absolutely nothing and all of a sudden they actually they, they spend a bunch of money and the next month all that money is back again in their bank account because of their interest, okay? Like there are people that have to go to great lengths to show the government that they are spending their money and they are using their money so they won't have to pay more taxes, all right? Um, so there is plenty and plenty and plenty of abundance. There is abundance of love, there's abundance of joy, there's abundance of money and food, all right? But it's all based on the way you think. And the way you think is based on your belief systems and the things that you have adapted throughout your life, especially growing up. And growing up, when I mentioned childhood and growing up doesn't only have to be you know, when I'm two years old and five years old and six, seven, and eight, I'm talking about, I guess I'm talking about, you know, high school, middle school, even college. These are, you know, these are the moments where we're really uh, adapting ourselves into society. And everything that we hear, we soak it up like a sponge. I'm sure you've heard that before. <laughs> and so, um, the last thing that I really, really want to talk about, which is, which this is geared mostly towards women but it's not only limited towards women. And the reason why I say this is that women have the hardest time in this area is receiving. If you cannot take compliments, you're gonna have a hard time making money. People that make money are just very good receivers. Yes. <laughs> People that make money are very good receivers. A lot of us have this notion that if I take something from somebody, and I'm not saying take without asking, I'm saying like if I receive something from somebody that I owe the person somehow or that I'm a taker somehow, again, that goes back to your belief systems and money and it goes back to the things that happened to you when you were a kid. I'll give you an example for this. Um, <laughs> When I was little, my mom used to always uh, used to always get on my back, and she would be like, "Don't be selfish. Remember, don't be selfish." Or whenever I would like fight with my brother, "Stop being selfish. Stop being selfish." This kind of mentality and these kinds of words are what keeps us from receiving, because we believe that we're being selfish. Right? There is nothing wrong with receiving. And receiving is in every, it can be adapted in every sense of the word. Receiving a compliment, uh, receiving a hug. There are people that don't like to receive hugs, okay? Because they weren't taught to receive hugs when they were little. How are you supposed to feel abundant if you cannot receive a hug? And so it really translates to all of that because it's all part of the same energy. It's an energy that comes and goes. You give, you receive, you receive and you give. All right, and it's not limited to, you know, oh, you can you can have everything you want in love, or you can have everything you want in health, but you're gonna be broke as fuck. You know, it's like, it doesn't work that way, guys. It's all about give and receive equally, 
in the sense of all the different areas of your life all right so just take a look at the area of money and how you feel about money and the negative aspects that you feel about money are what are is what is keeping you from making more money and for the people that have a set income because I also hear that well I have a salary and this is my salary and well this is what I work with you know I work with my salary there are so many different ways of making money so many there are a thousand different ways of making money and there are thousands of ways of receiving money okay so don't limit yourself you see that is a limiting belief that I cannot make any more money because I have a set salary that is a limiting belief. There are thousands of other ways, thousands of other things that you can do to make money on the side or from your job. And so I really hope that this helped you guys. Um, let that simmer and I definitely can talk for a very long time about money. Um, I spent all of last year uh, coaching myself and with other coaches um, with other with learning about wealth and learning about um, you know what stops us from making more money and I had to shed all my belief systems with money because I had negative belief systems with money and the way that you shed these belief systems with money is through a very very special act and it starts with an H healing my friends healing okay Heal yourself from all the crap that has ever happened to you and your whole energy will open up for you to learn to receive more abundance. Whatever that abundance you're looking for, that is the point of healing. When we heal ourselves from all of our doubts, our fears, when we heal ourselves from all the little crappy stuff that has happened to us in our childhood, uh, adolescence, uh, I don't, I don't know, early adulthood, um, we are able to really let go of those limiting beliefs that I can't do it, that I'm not good enough, that there's not enough money, there's never going to be any money coming to me, I'm just not lucky with money, I'm terrible with money, I spend too much money, whatever. When you heal yourself, all of a sudden, the possibilities are endless. You become so much more creative into what it is that you want to end up doing and so that is my message for you guys today and i hope you guys really enjoy it i love you all and i'll see you next time Mwah! bye